another episode of probabilistic programming primer I'm going to talk about how to build a Bayesian logic logistic regression model this is based on the work of J. Benjamin Cook and the question is how likely am I to make more than 50,000 US dollars so we're going to use the adult data set which is from UCI Irvine repository and uh, we're going to do a little bit of like uh, kind of feature engineering we're going to exclude anybody who we don't have any income data on which is uh, which is fine we're going to restrict this to the US we're going to create a variable a binary variable for income we're going to only look at age education hours and age squared as uh, age squared is defined here as um, as our features or our covariates we can see that we have a bit of a um, class imbalance here so so we will use a simple model which assumes that the probability of making more than 50k uh, 50,000 US dollars is a function of age years of education and hours work per week we will use PyMC3 to do inference in Bayesian statistics, for those of you who do not know, we treat everything as a random variable. And we want to know the posterior uh, probability distribution of the parameters. In this case, the regression coefficients. In this case, our parameters are the regression coefficients. Um, the posterior is equal to the likelihood, um, and there's a small error there, um, divide so the posterior is equal to the likelihood times the prior divided by some factor because the denominator PD is you know it's described as this it's an integral we would prefer to skip computing it but fortunately if we draw a samples from the parameter space the probability proportional to the height of the posterior at any point, at any given point, we end up with an empirical distribution that converges to the posterior as the number of samples approaches infinity. What this means in, in practice is that we only need to worry about uh, the numerator. So getting back to logistic regression, we need to specify a prior and a likelihood in order to draw samples from the posterior. We could use sociological um, knowledge about the effects of age and education on income, but we don't know this because I'm an outsider, I'm not a sociologist. But instead, let's just use the default prior specification for GLM coefficients, that's general linear model coefficients that PyMC3 gives us, which is um, sampled from this um, uh, from this normal distribution. This is a very vague prior that will let the data speak for itself. The likelihood is the product of, of N Bernoulli trials where PI equals 1 over 1 minus exp exponential function to the power of minus ZI and ZI is uh, these coefficients. And why why I equals one equal if um if income is greater than fifty k and why I equals zero other otherwise. With the math out of the way, we can get back to the data. Here I use PyMC three to draw samples from the posterior. The sampling algorithm used is nuts, which is a for, form of Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, in which the parameters are tuned automatically. Notice, and this is probably one of the nicest things about PyMC3, we get to borrow the syntax of specifying GLMs from R. So it's very con uh, convenient. And the last line in the cell tosses out the first 1,000 samples which are taken before the Markov chain has converged and therefore do not come from our target distribution. And these are not important for us. So, as you can see, you get this nice syntax. Um, I, I've done a little trick here. I've started initialization with ADVI because otherwise I couldn't get this to work. Um, and you can see that I return the trace, which is one of our most important objects here. And I also return our posterior predictive. This is what we can use to do criticism if we want to of this model. 
So we have a little look at the trace, we can see the intercept, we have a little look at trace age, I just want to see if there's actually any numbers here. Um, we can see that how beta education and beta age are distributed. Um, they've got like a kind of normal distribution. We can see that there's a bit of a, there's not much correlation between the two of them. So that's fine. So how, so here's our question. How do age and education affect the probability of making more than 50k? Um, to answer this question, we can show how the probability of making more than 50k changes with age for a few different education levels. Here we assume that the number of hours worked per week is fixed to 50. And Pi MC3 gives us a convenient way to plot the posterior predictive distribution. So we need to give a function, a linear model, and a set of points to evaluate. So we will pass in three different models, one with education equals 12, so that's finishing high school, one with education equal to 16, that's finished undergrad, and one with education equals to 19, which is three years of grad school. And you can see here, so as as you go up with, with so as your, so high school education, so you can see that grad school increases your probability of getting um, to earn more than 50k until you hit about 50 years and then it kind of levels off and then it kind of goes down and this probably indicates that there's you know some advantage to education and you get the same kind of uh, uh, form with all three of these um, this indicates that education matters up to a certain age but you know, beyond that age, you probably won't earn that much, and that's probably because above the age of say fifty years old, you're probably not likely to dramatically change your earnings at that point, or even like be in the labour market in some cases. So you can see, like, so we can like scroll over here, and we can like, we can say things like approximately. At age 40, the probability of getting an income greater than 50k is 60%, we'll say for the sake of argument. And, but if you had grad school, your probability is 68%. So there's an 8% uplift at the same age, all things being equal, by having grad school versus... Um, by having grad school versus um, uh, high school education. And we can look at the um, the odds ratio, and we can find our confidence interval. And uh, even though this doesn't run, it doesn't matter. But whenever I ran this before, um, uh, we are ninety five percent confident that our odds ratio lies between our interval, which means that we can trust these results in some sense. So, up at the, so these are just a bunch of. Um, uh, of functions to run multiple models. I'm not going to run these. Um, but basically one of the questions we have is why should it be age 2 versus age? So we run the model with age cubed, age uh, 4 and uh, all those variables and you can see and here's our evaluation metric. This is the WAIC which is a standard evaluation metric in uh, PyMC3 and you can see that K2 is better than K1, so age squared is better than K1. There's not much difference between age cubed and age 2. Um, and age, uh, age to the power of 4 is slightly um, better, but we can kind of say that age squared was our best case in this case. So that pretty much wraps up what we have so far. Um,